And we are back. Welcome back. Welcome hello. back, players. Hello, hello. So that was a lot of fun, but let's go ahead and move our focus back to the Stone Tooth and back to the Forge of Fury, where Kretha and Durgadin are ostensibly ruling the place, at least for now. I would like uh, to know a little bit about what is Kretha up to um, in the early hours. She wasn't like standing watch with the others in the front, right? What what was she about um, on this full moon night? Okay, now and I have to think about this because... Last we saw, when we parted ways, you and Vic were in the forge proper. Yeah, I was in the forge for quite a bit. I'm trying to think about what I would be doing on the full moon night because you guys have actually done some full moon stuff without me. Yeah. yeah. So I have to think about that. Um, Cause I'm not really sure. Like. Does anything attack the forge? Does anything attach, attack the forge? So no, as of, as of, you know, you all being called away, nothing has attacked the forge. And okay. so to be fair, we were called away from the forge like 30 seconds ago. That's and that's true. So maybe what I a think, whole minute. So so what I think is that Kretha is probably still in the forge proper. Like it would make sense that she and Durgadin would be there just in case the, the iron golems need to be activated for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, at some point relatively quickly, a couple of dwarven guards will will sort of, of jog up to you, make a very respectful salute and report to you that your comrades have been called away to the front lines because Barnabas is in danger. Okay. And the teleportation circle may still be open if you move quickly. So I guess, ooh, that's a tough one because her, her, one of her main instincts would be to go to help Barnabas but at the same time, there has been impressed upon her in some respect or another, you know, that the forge is kind of her place, you know, as kind of the cleric at the forge. I don't know. Um, <laughs> she would actually, she would, she would, I'm sure Durgadin would feel her confliction. Yeah. I don't even know if she would be able to articulate it right away. So, so she's sort of, sort of going back and forth in her mind. Should I, should I, should I stay or should I go? Da, na, 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 na. Yeah. So, I'm like, if you didn't sing it, I was gonna. Um, Somebody had to do it. It was required. Yeah, he will. He will notice your turmoil at some point, and he will speak in your mind, and he'll say, "A ruler does not always need to remain behind. Your own King Barnabas." He tends to take matters into his own hands, yes? Yes. And the thing is, is I wasn't there and he he got hurt and and is now much more in danger because of the full moon. There's more that's happening and I worry about leaving the forge alone um during uh, leaving it vulnerable but i worry about leaving my friends vulnerable i cannot forge forever and if i go you would go yes. or would you stay no i i accompany you yes but if i take you then the forge is doubly vulnerable Look around you. And you glance around. And there's a whole bunch of dwarves. And there are, like, there the are industrious dwarves working. Vic is probably hanging out of a, like a, like a, not a cabinet, like, like the back of some of the, one of the big machines. Like she's hanging out the back of it, like making repairs upside down or something along those lines. And so how you started the dwarves to hearing only one side of the conversation. Wait, wait, can I, can I ask Vic make a note? Vic is probably actively just making, like, there's, there's working on the forge, but then there's taking a break and working on the tiniest super suit. 
<laughs> like like tiny tiny right like like, like the like, tiniest <laughs> i i love it i can't wait to hear more um when it gets done so you notice that the the forge is running very efficiently at this point and there are guards and there are you know wards in place and the iron golems can be automated to attack any enemies as they enter like yes staying here would would make the forge more powerful and would protect it but that's not necessarily <laughs> that doesn't necessarily have to be who you are i just i just got a, a a mental image of them hanging a sign over the forge that says orcs stay out uh <laughs> And it's because it's a warning sign because the iron golems are programmed to kill any orc that steps into the door. Orc is spelled O R K Z. <laughs> of course, of course. Can't give them too much dignity. Um, but like, also, the A is backwards. Like that's the that's the warning. It's like yeah, we're we're not like yeah, it'll kill any orc that goes there there. But we're not monsters. We don't want to hit any friendly orcs. So like the, a friendly orc is the one most likely to obey the warning sign. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, that's true. So also admittedly from a sort of meta game standpoint, this is me attempting to get the party back together. Oh, um, I know. And I, I was but... just trying to think about it the way Krita yeah. is. No, the you're, only you're, other you're problem killing. I have with your approach is that it involves using the portal. <laughs> She's going to throw up instead. I am <laughs> going, yes, Krita is going to bomb all over the place. I could absolutely uh, see that being a very serious totally consideration. Like, um, actually, so I have... my friends on the other side, I need to go there. And then uh, Durgan is like, it's the portal, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I love this as a, as, as a character trait for her. It's been so helpful. <laughs> How about how about this? I figure I figure this, right? Vic probably got the lowdown from the other wolves, right? From Kevin and Bevan and Bevan. Yeah, they would have reported in. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so Vic will probably be like, okay, um, Krita, you have to <sighs> look, I know it's bad, but you have you have to use the portal. Like, I understand. All right. I Krita, I totally want you to walk up it. right up to the edge of the portal, and I promise you, just look straight at it. It'll be Oshub. <laughs> I feel like she needs, like, a special tiny bag of holding just as, like, an airline <laughs> sickness bag. You want, would, would you like Beetle the to go The world's with? worst bag of holding. Tiny little it, it also makes a handy grenade. <laughs> would you, would you, would you like, would you like Beetle to go with you? Okay. 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 And, and Vic, Vic is going to hand over, like, the smallest fucking frog. <laughs> like, like, Vic's hands are huge, but we're talking, like, about the size of her thumb total. Like, and it's in a little tiny metal suit <laughs> with little tiny thrusters. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the thrusters. I have lost all control of this game. <laughs> this is an important campaign detail, okay? <laughs> and it really is. Those thrusters are going to save our fucking lives. It's adorable you think it was ever on the rail. <laughs> So, so, so Vic is gonna pass over um, Beetle and also the horrible nightmare child that is oh. the little homunculus, little Ben, <laughs> and little Ben. So the, here's two small familiars. Thank you. I will try not to throw up on them. Uh, little Ben is very good at cleaning that specifically. A little Ben gives like little thumbs ups. <laughs> okay. okay. Shoulder, stinky, Durgadin. Let us go. <laughs> you all be good now. 
give me a constitution save with later. disadvantage. Yeah. I would say advantage because of the help action. I will, I will, I will zero them out because this has okay, been such yeah. a long running gag at this point. This is a long running that's, gag. So that's yeah, where the disadvantage like... comes from. So with, with Look, the help action, yes, we can at least upgrade it to a straight roll. Be Beetle is an emotional support baby. <laughs> Oh, dang. You know, we made it. You know, it turns so, out if you don't think about it too hard, it kind of is over before you're before you know what's happening. Oh, and I'm like, still quite nauseous. I just save uh, myself uh, from actually vomiting on the floor. So you know it can be done. Yes, <laughs> we now know uh, it can be done. For the first time, it happened. Rather, I can only assume happen. I hadn't eaten in a while. <laughs> you know, that's fair. <laughs> no, don't even joke about that. Retching is even worse. It is. Retching it is, is so much worse. It is so oh, much but worse. But anyway, you come in. So, there's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> All right, yes. you're gonna have to explain this. So, so let's like, let's talk. Coolly let's enough, talk. I have not rewatched that stuff yet, so yeah. I don't know what's happening. So I'm coming right. in blind, just so like Kreetha is. You appear <laughs> on the inside of a of a ten foot square tent, and oh, I'm so glad I didn't throw up in the middle of the tent. And the flap is currently closed. Was it, was it, was it the king's tent? Um, no, it's, no. it's nondescript. It has no furnishings That's in it. Fine. It's just, right. it, it's it just a tent. Yeah, it's just a tent for the teleportation circle, as far as you can tell, um, with your still kind of blurry vision as you, as you sort of stagger forward. Because you um, know that smell would not come out of the freaking. You immediately catch an incredibly, incredibly powerful smell of corpse flour. Oh, well, like, hey, look, I didn't have to vomit. It's oh, already there. And blood. Oh, boy, rotten plant matter. Perfect. Yeah. So you, you catch, Fantastic. I mean, you you came from a swamp. You know what corpse flowers are. Oh, well, I know it, yeah. And it like, like, you get that rotten, rotten meat smell yeah, yeah, rotten mixed meat, with, yeah. mixed with a, a fresh blood smell. Um, the, this is delicious. The I don't know how here, I didn't vomit. Th the atmosphere here is like is is very heavy, so your ears pop right away. Like when you right when you come through the pressure difference, just boom, ears pop. That and, probably distracted me from vomiting, to be honest. And you hear dwarves speaking in dwarven outside, just usual <laughs> um, patrol stuff. Um, mm -hmm. What do you do? I leave the tent. <laughs> oh man, there are so many bodies out there. Oh my god, they're all dead. There are there are dwarf bodies. There are are uh, orc bodies. There are massive mounds of rotting plants and things that were clearly dead and stood up and then died again, like someone like a zombie who was decapitated with no blood pool, that sort of thing. And you take this all in in a moment. And yeah, for just a moment, it's like. Oh my God, they're all dead. And then from above you, you get a call, like you get a, a like a, like a, hey, hey, up here. And, and there of is stinky and... a broomstick hovering in the air with the one and only resident sorcerer Calder Creed astride it. Um, Calder, now earlier on, you had some big combat and you were able to to defeat all of the enemies, but there were still some problems happening. Um, at some point, you realize that the Nightcaller whistle, the whistle that uh, brings back the dead, had vanished from your possession. And though it's extremely frustrating, you, it, it actually confirms a theory that you sort of had already, that the more this thing is is desired and used by the one who is uh, connected to it, it becomes more powerful. And it's not super duper surprising that you that it that it vanished from you, and you at least know who has it. I or at least heavily suspect. Heavily suspect. So you uh, find Kreetha staggering out into the scene of mass violence. And yeah, now that you notice it, like on the edge, some of the some of the dwarves are checking for wounded and, you know, pulling bodies and getting them all all, you know, out of the way, as it were. But uh, what does Calder do? Uh, Calder Creed, resident sorcerer and weed killer will descend from the will descend on, on his broom at, to Kreetha, his friend and go, ah, you're here. 
Good. What the hell? No you haven't been gone that long. Like, I'm smiling, but it's very, very clear. Calder is very angry at something. Um, We're fine for now. The uh, there are a lot of corpse. Fl- there are there are many corpse flowers that are moving through this camp. I can't do anything to kill all of them, so I'm doing my best to put on a happy face. Um, yes, that's your happy face. I've seen it before. <laughs> Echo and Ghost, you can go ahead and enter the scene at any time that you want. So something, as you said something that she... like a, a a an undead head will be lifted off the ground and will crush into pulp. From Calder's not even like consciously doing it; his telekinesis is just ripping out, crushing it, and putting it down. Hmm. When you said that Kreetha saw the dwarves that were checking for wounded, Echo is among that crowd. He is going around all the shield dwarves and like casting spare the dying on any that still have all their limbs attached. Like he's trying to save as many as he can. That's what he's doing. <laughs> we only have a few minutes, so um, get ready. <laughs> what am I fight? Is it just corpse flowers? Is it everything? Where it's the 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 attack is here. It's here. It was deliberately shaped to come here. And 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 how is the king? Over there, he's unharmed. And as as you motion over, you do see. King Barnabas um, speaking with a pair of dwarves that anyone who was here last time recognizes as Ivan and Pykel Boulder Shoulder. Um, Kreetha ha- has not seen these two yet, have they? Oh yeah, they, they visited the fort. No, no. Yeah, they did visit the fort. Yeah. Also, so, when so, you yeah. look over at Dirk, when you look over at Barnabas, there's another Echo standing next to Barnabas. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. He did the invoke duplicity, and the other one's hanging around part of this. She doesn't know what that no. means. <laughs> what do you do? You're seeing double moving on. Freaks out. Why are there... How are there... Which ones? Durganin will speak aloud. Kreetha, how do you always forget that magic exists? You have me. Which one's Echo? The real one's the real one is over by uh, helping the wounded. Now that you notice, the one that's standing next to Barnabas does have a rather vacuous look on his face, and he's not really doing anything. Which is not does not rule out it being. <laughs> but... Uh M, you are muted. I'm gonna have to ask about that later. Sorry, oh. I had to deal with a cat. Um what where's Ghost? Oh, so ghost ghost is is on the way up with like three or four of like the stamens of the um uh of of their uh their dancing partner the last thing and is going to just bring them up and hand them to calder and goes i think you said that you wanted these but i don't remember exactly i wasn't really paying attention <laughs> calder will just a goal will just take them and go Oh, this is the first time anyone's gotten me flowers. I would have gotten you like the bigger part, but it fell apart while I was cutting. Well, that's well because these are from you, from something that you took the time to pick. Like this just makes like all I, the more. I, did, we did, we also did dancing with it, so like it has a little it, bit of that uh, that panache and that like yeah, fancy I, flourish. Thank you so much. I will pre- say thank you so much. I'll pu- I'll make a pressing. Uh, I'll make pressings of it for. Uh, They're in a so bit. cute. <laughs> if you do something like that, I want to see it because I think that would look very good. And I'll maybe, maybe I will add it to like a cloak or something, like a design very similar. I think it would be very good for a new costume reveal in the future. I could work with that. I'm going oh, go to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I am able to perform weddings now. <laughs> What? That's very good. I'm so glad that somebody can good do for that. You. So I think I think after saying that, Kreetha mm-hmm. looks back over at the the fake echo because it's just about at the end of its time. And the fake echo, instead of staring off into the distance, looks directly at Kreetha. And for the last second that the illusion is there, it doesn't look like Echo anymore. It looks like a blonde halfling woman who gives a wink and then it vanishes. Nice. 
it is midnight where I live. <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs>